Welcome to Food for Thought. This is a five-part webinar series as part of our Enterprise-Wide Diversity Week, where we're talking a little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Today, we're going to have a discussion with Belma Husakovic, who is in our talent acquisition areas, and we're going to talk just a little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're going to introduce key topics, key terms, um, and have a little bit of a conversation around what the value is in prioritizing DE&I. Uh, Belma, do you want to go ahead and do a quick intro for our audience today? Yeah, certainly. Thank you so much for having me here today, Natasha. It's a great pleasure to be here and to work with you on this. So my name is Belma. I currently work with talent acquisition here at Sanford Health, um, and I am located in Sioux Falls. So my passion for DE&I has its roots in my early childhood, um, just due to my family's background. So for the audience's awareness, my parents and my older brother are immigrants who came to the United States in 1997. Um, in search of a better and safer life, um, just due to some hardships that they face in their home country, which it included war. So they came to the United States and I was born just a year later. And growing up, I learned a lot about their experiences, both pre and post immigration, what it was like to basically start life anew, right? So this really sparked my desire to learn more about and to find ways to help underserved populations in my local community. So I ultimately started my focus focus on immigrants so because that was what I was familiar with but I soon explored other areas throughout my higher education and quickly realized that this would be my primary motivation to focus on DEI as part of my professional career so I am very very grateful to have the opportunity to work on DEI related efforts here at Sanford Health and I'm very much looking forward to today's discussion thank you so much once again Natasha yeah, well, you've been a trusted partner. I'm excited, you know, for your lived experience um, and certainly your experience here at Sanford. You know, you've been uh, laying the foundation and, and setting out some building blocks for DE&I long before I arrived at the organization. Um, so I'm excited to get to talk about that today. So to frame this conversation up, you know, there are a couple of things that I always like to do. One is that we're connecting this conversation back to the Sanford Health uh, values. You know, our shared values of family and community and how they really call upon each one of us to embrace, embrace diversity and our connection to one another, uh, ensuring that we are honoring the lived experiences and the diverse uh, talent that we see in our people, uh, the diversity that we see in our patients and in our residents and that of our community. Um, here at Sanford, we are here for all and we're here for good. So to start our topic today, you know, we're going to create just some clarity, some clarity around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, when we think about these three words, you know, I think that there's a lot of connotation attached to these words um, and maybe some assumptions that might be attached to these words. And so I always find that clarity around what diversity, equity, and inclusion means and why it's so important can really set our conversation up for success. So diversity. You know, simply put, diversity is the range of human differences. Um, each person has layers of diversity, which we're going to talk about today, and it makes their perspective really unique. It makes their worldview um, and their culture very unique to them. So that's what diversity means. Equity, it, this is the act of ensuring policies, processes, and programs produce fair, impartial, and equal outcomes. Um, there's a lot of misconception around the word equity. I think um, folks often associate it or correlate it back to um, equality. And it's important to know that equity isn't equality. You know, it's not treating everybody the same. It's really understanding what's necessary to produce fair and impartial or equal outcomes. And then inclusion. Um, inclusion is a really, really important word in the work that we talk about um, from diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's really the why. Inclusion is really about the employee and the patient experience of feeling accepted and appreciated as an individual, both in the workplace and in the healthcare setting as a patient. Um, when I think about inclusion and, and really the why, we know that inclusion is actually a driver for a lot of things um, that impact the healthcare setting. 
a driver for um, retention. It's a driver for ensuring appropriate representation in the workforce from our community. And it's really a driver of our patient and employee experience. Um, in a national survey that was conducted by advisory board, um, they found that amongst 10,000 employed Americans, a survey found that 54% felt that they didn't belong at their company. So more than half of individuals that were surveyed said, you know, the inclusion just, it's not there. Um, in that same survey, employees uh, that were satisfied with their organization's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion were two times as engaged as employees who said that they were not satisfied with their employer's DEI efforts. Employees who feel they work at diverse and inclusive organizations were nearly 20% more likely to stay longer. Teams with inclusive leadership were 20% more likely to say they make high quality and innovative decisions. So the data is clear. Diversity, equity, and inclusion really drives retention, it drives employer brand, and it drives employee experience. An inclusive culture fosters psychological safety. Psychological safety is a concept that was coined by Harvard professor Amy Edmondson. Amy says, team psychological safety describes an interpersonal climate that's characterized by trust and respect in which all people are comfortable being themselves. So that's exactly what this conversation is about today and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. Next, we will just, you know, talk a little bit more about this equity and how it is different from equality. Um, I mentioned it before, but there's a lot of misconception between those two words. I often get folks that ask me, you know, isn't DE&I work about making sure everything's equal? But as you can see on the illustration uh, in front of us today, equality doesn't always necessarily produce fair outcomes. If you give everybody the same thing or treat everybody the same, um, it's not necessarily leading to the outcomes where people are feeling valued, feeling included, feeling appreciated for their unique and diverse perspective. So equity is really different from equality. Equity is about giving folks what they need in order to perform their best work. And so that's, that's the true difference between um, equity and equality. So how can DE&I impact workplace culture? You know, this is a really critical question. This is exactly why I've invited Belma to come and talk with us a little bit today. Um, you know, we can frame this conversation in this, this next segment up under um, the thoughts and ideals uh, on the screen. Diversity, being invited to the dance. Inclusion, being asked to dance. Equity is the space that you have on the dance floor, but belonging is really the environment, right? The, the surrounding culture that allows you to dance like no one is watching. So Belma, I'm curious, uh, you know, from your perspective, at the onset of our conversation, you talked a little bit about the really unique worldviews, you know, that um, have shaped who you are. They've shaped, you know, the, um, the person that you show up as here at Sanford and really the work that you've uh, done here at Sanford. You've been a part of what we call the DE&I Talent Acquisition Task Force. You created uh, or helped create a committee of professionals that are just as committed as, as you are to DE&I. I'm wondering if you can share from your perspective a little bit about belonging. You know, how has your work in that space contributed to your engagement and, and really that sense of belonging that you have here at Sanford? Yes, certainly. That is a fantastic question, Natasha. So when it comes to that sense of belonging, as you mentioned, that committee that we formed in talent acquisition, I think the work that we've done there has not only benefited, you know, those who volunteer to join that committee and really put in the time and the effort to work on different aspects of DEI, what we can do to raise awareness within our team, um, but really understanding the different perspectives that we can come face to face with on a daily basis and ensuring that we're acting in a way 
way that is respectful and mindful of other individuals who maybe share that different perspective from us and ensuring that they feel like they belong here because that's really our, our ultimate value, right, is creating that sense of family and community as we mentioned earlier on in this slideshow. So, um, you know, when I think about the committee, I have noticed that not only do the employees who join that committee really talk about their passions for DEI and the benefits that they've seen as a result of, you know, the work that we've put out, but I've actually seen other employees too who aren't necessarily within that DEI committee that we formed, and they will step forward and say, you know, I really appreciate the work that you all are doing. I do feel a sense of belonging. I feel valued, and that to me is just what really drives us to continue this work, right? This committee wasn't a thing around two years ago uh, when it was first created and first thought of, and now, you know, just a short time later, you're seeing the positive impact already of creating that sense of belonging. So I think it's important that no matter what role you play in this organization, whether, you know, you're an employee or you're a patient or anyone like that, um, that everyone has that same opportunity to feel like they belong. Yeah, and I love that you talk about the impact that the committee work has had just outside of, you know, the folks that are directly involved, that it's really creating that environment or that surrounding culture um, where people can see it being prioritized. You know, they see us having conversations about DE&I. Um, you guys have led uh, a couple of different trainings and things like that that have contributed to that culture. And so certainly I think that it's um, driving home the environment, which is exactly, you know, the outcome um, that we are we're really aiming for right in DE and I work. The next slide we'll talk a little bit about how diversity is reflected in our people you know here at Sanford Health in our patients and residents and in our community. Um, it's important to know that you know, diversity really is an iceberg. There are things that we are able to see when we meet somebody and there are a lot of things um, that make someone who they are that have contributed to their really unique worldview that we would never be able to see. We would never know when we meet somebody unless we took the time to get to know them. Um, every so often, you know, you are able to tell someone's gender or their race and ethnicity when you meet them, uh, but sometimes you can't, right? Sometimes you really have to get to know somebody to understand who they are. You know, there are additional layers to this iceberg that, you know, certainly you would need to get to know somebody to understand. Things like, you know, their family structure, you know, whether or not they are a military family or have a veteran status, their sexual orientation, you know, who they choose to spend their life or partnership with, um, religion and spiritual beliefs. Those are under, under the surface. You know, there's a, a really important elements, um, sometimes the most important elements to somebody, uh, but we really have to take the time to understand the individual to, to understand those elements of them. Um, Belma, I'm curious from your perspective in, in having um, the DEI committee within talent acquisition, how have you guys worked to create more awareness around how diversity is reflected in, in our organization? Yeah, so with the committee, what we do is we will get together monthly and talk about certain topic areas that we want to touch on as part of a training or focus area that we can then send out to the rest of talent acquisition um, for them to learn more about and really increase their awareness and better understand what they can do to apply that information, not only within their professional work, but even their personal lives as well. So um, we'll gather resources such as articles, videos, we'll even have testimonies from current employees within the organization to send out to the rest of the team to show different topic areas. So just to touch on some areas that we talked about before, um, we have talked about disability awareness, we've talked about the LGBTQ plus community, um, we had some training on Black History Month recently, and then also for women as well in addition to some other topics. So we'll definitely continue to move forward on including other other topic areas under our wing, um, but in terms of the effectiveness of this training that we've had so far, um, as I mentioned previously, a lot of people have come forward and provided positive feedback on it. I would say most of the time people will say, hey, I 
didn't even know this before. So this was really enlightening for me to read through or to watch um, and find out how I can apply this to my daily life, whether here in talent acquisition, as a patient at Sanford Health, or even just in your personal life with your family and friends. Yeah, you know, as you were talking about the education and the awareness, right, that you're helping to drive here at the organization, um, I couldn't help but reflect on just, gosh, what a critical piece of our organization to be focusing on, right? Our talent acquisition areas is really this core function that works directly with our leaders um, to onboard, to bring on new individuals to our organization. And so sometimes um, this group, you're the first impression, you're that handshake out into the community um, in, in getting people on board here at Sanford. And so I think it's just, it's a really beautiful thing that you're doing in priority this conversation, creating those feelings of belonging uh, for those you work alongside and, and certainly creating some awareness um, that we know can help drive, you know, Sanford Health in reflecting the communities that we provide care. Um, so why is it important, right? Like that's what we're going to talk about next. We'll talk about the why. Um, you've talked just a little bit about the work that you've done, and I think it gives a nod to all of the benefits that are on this slide in front of us. Um, you know, our communities and therefore our co-working population and our patient and resident population, they continue to diversify in a myriad of ways. You know, we continue to see in our public school systems, for instance, the um, diversity just continues to increase. You know, we've seen increases uh, upwards of 30% since 1990 in some of the public school systems that exist in the Sanford Health footprint. And so what that tells us is that the incoming generations, you know, the, the folks that are coming of age and, and will be the workforce of tomorrow, um, they come with unique lived experiences. They continue to diversify and as organizations, um, we have to be providing opportunities and education uh, for folks to grow right alongside the incoming youth. Um, honoring individual lived experiences, backgrounds, religions, and perspectives really does drive that psychological safety that we talked about in the beginning. It drives the feelings of inclusivity and belonging, um, and, and particularly for our underrepresented populations. And so it, it makes this work a really critical piece of employee experience, retention, um, and truly attracting the talent that we know is necessary to be the premier rural healthcare system in America. America. Um, every person you meet is unique. Uh, creating time and space to get to know them really helps expand our own worldview. Um, this is a really, really important call out. You know, when I think about diversity, equity, and inclusion, people uh, maybe come with some presumptions around who that work is for. You know, is it for um, specific races and ethnicities? Is it specific for uh, people who have a certain sexual orientation? Um, for me, in, in my own lived experience, Experience, diversity, equity, and inclusion is for everyone because everybody you meet has their own unique lens and their own unique worldview that they show up to work with every single day, uh, the unique worldview that they provide care with every single day. And if we can create the type of culture that drives meaningful connection and psychological safety, we're going to get to know the people that we work with. We're going to get to know the people that we're providing care to, and it's going to help us expand our own worldview. So there are benefits for every single person in our organization when we prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, diversity also strengthens our teams and our organization. Uh, Belma, I, I want to hear from you on this. You know, we've talked a little bit about what the talent acquisition DEI committee has done, uh, but I'm curious from your perspective, how have you seen that strengthen the team? How have you seen that play out? Yeah, fantastic question once again. So when it comes to really the outcome of what we've done so far as a committee and seeing how that's affected our teams within talent acquisition, no matter you know if you're in sourcing, a representative, anything like that, I've seen a myriad of different benefits. So, you know, for example, we have employees who are much more open about sharing their perspectives, which I think is a great benefit to our teams um, because we definitely don't want to foster an environment where they don't feel like 
like they can share a certain thought or idea that they may have for fear of rejection from the rest of their team members. So really encouraging that safe and open environment where no matter what your perspective is, what your idea is, feel free to share that with your team members and we can work through it together um, to really reach that ultimate end goal so that we can continue to cooperate moving forward. Um, you know, as I briefly mentioned earlier, we also have employees who have stepped forward and expressed their great gratitude for the work that we've done so far and ensuring that they feel included in this work. I think that also shows that we're strengthening our team skills here and ensuring that everyone has that seat at the table so that their voices can be heard um, and that they feel well represented within our team. I think people are also really beginning to challenge themselves to get to know each other better, which is also a part of team building, right? Just taking the time to have a conversation with your coworkers or even the candidates that you're working with and the hiring managers that you're assisting with recruitment for and asking them questions about themselves. You know, it doesn't all have to be necessarily work related, but just taking that time to get to know them a little bit better and encouraging that safe, open, thoughtful discussion um, so that, you know, moving forward, you can respect, um, them as an individual and you know how to approach certain situations with them and ensure that they feel included as opposed to maybe feeling intimidated or threatened or anything along those lines. I would say those are some of the benefits that I've seen so far and I would say each and every one of those has a role to play in strengthening our team within talent acquisition um, and it just goes to show that this work really does have an impact on what we do on a daily basis and I think we're reaching a point where everyone is starting to feel a little bit more involved in the work that they do and they're showing that passion for it and they really do care about it. Um, and I'm hoping that as we continue to work on our DEI efforts here in talent acquisition and even across the enterprise um, that we just continue to go up from here. Absolutely. You know, some of the comments that you made that um, really highlighted for me the outcomes that you've seen, you talked a lot about safety. You know, you talked about that psychological safety, the safety to speak up, you know, if, if something doesn't seem quite right. You know, what we know about, you know, psychological safety and how it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion work is that it can really drive um you know, innovation, right? When people aren't afraid to take risks or they're not afraid to uh, put themselves out there, if we can drive some of that safety uh, with diversity, equity, and inclusion work, um, those benefits, they just continue to multiply. Uh, speaking of safe, you know, one of the topics that I was really excited to discuss in our diversity, equity, and inclusion introduction today um, was our safe work. When I think about what actions, you know, individuals can take to become more inclusive, our safe work here at Sanford really does come uh, top of mind for me. Um, one element of inclusivity really is our safe skills. Uh, a couple of the safe skills that just come to the top for me in creating those really inclusive environments, which Belma, you have alluded to just in your comments, kind of creating a perfect segue for this, uh, is really listening, you know, listening with empathy and an intent to understand. Um, ensuring that we are communicating positive intent to everyone. Uh, providing opportunities for everyone to be heard. You know, Belma, you've talked a little bit about ensuring that all voices are heard. I think about our, our annual employee engagement survey that is coming up. It's right around the corner, right? Like that's the opportunity to ensure that our teams, our employees are able to use their voice uh, and be heard. Um, and then using people's preferred names, you know, and their correct pronouns. It's just another way that we can leverage our safe skills to ensure inclusivity and, and really those feelings of belonging. Some other recommended strategies and actions that can be implemented on, you know, the individual level, um, seeking to get to know folks who are different than you. You know, it's it's as simple as that. I know that that's uh, feels like maybe an oversimplification, but we can talk just a little bit about what that looks like. You know, we want to ensure that you're you're genuinely interested. You know, I think that 
sometimes there's a fine line right between curiosity and interrogation we want to ensure that when we're looking to create those really inclusive environments that we're coming from a really genuine place um, and and we can ensure that that's true uh, when we come from a place of wanting to build a relationship um, that's where that genuine um, curiosity really comes to life is through the relationship building um, education, you know, educating yourself on different communities. That's one way that we can all really invest in ourselves and our own development to increase our worldview uh, and to expand on that. Uh, but remembering that genuine curiosity over suspicion or interrogation. Uh, diversifying media outlets, including your leisurely reading. You know, Velma, some of the comments that you've made really um, highlight that for me, that you guys have worked hard to diversify the types of material that's put in front of teams, the type of training or educational opportunities that are put in front of teams. Um, we can create space, intentionally create space for underrepresented voices. You know, you talked about that as well, ensuring that every voice is heard and that we are creating collaboration Active decision making practices, uh, you know, for decisions that fall within our, our scope of responsibility. I'm um, doing some learning around unconscious bias. Um, you know, we've got lots of material out on our newly revamped diversity, equity, and inclusion SharePoint site that elevate unconscious bias. And you can leverage those materials. You can take a self assessment and really dive into what um, unconscious or implicit biases might be impacting your, your actions, your behaviors, your decisions, um, and really slow down your decision making process to become more aware of those unconscious biases. Um, spending some time thinking about what it might not or what it might be like to not have specific barriers. So practicing empathy, you know, and really envisioning um, what things look like from different vantage points, um, specifically for populations that maybe do have barriers that, that you didn't experience. If you get stuck, talk with an advisor. You know, when I think about one of the benefits of this DEI committee that was created in Talent Acquisition, Belma, it's that you guys have created a really safe space um, to be honest with one another, to brainstorm, and and really to provide maybe that camaraderie or that advising. So when you get stuck on a bias or you get stuck um, on on an issue that's impacting inclusivity and belonging, you have have a trusted colleague uh, to work through that with. You can attend different cultural events uh, or community events. Um, all throughout the Sanford Health footprint, we have an incredible um, array of nonprofit organizations and other community-led initiatives that really center um, cultural diversity and other types of diversity in our communities. And getting involved in pride events or cultural events can really help expand some of that worldview and, and really help with the relationship building in diverse populations. Uh, being aware of microaggressions. You know, I mentioned our diversity, equity, and inclusion SharePoint site um, in, in regards to unconscious bias. We will also have um, just incredible resources talking about microaggressions, what those are, um, and really how to course correct. Um, I like to think about course correcting in terms of micro affirmations or micro shifts in our behavior, um, ways that we can create, you know, the those, those sorts of shifts are really in leaning into our teams, letting them be the experts in their experience and being willing um, to believe their lived experiences when they share them with us. And then finally, honoring an impact over intent environment. You know, one of the things that I talk about in relationship building and in building relationships cross-culturally or driving feelings of belonging and inclusion is really the accountability piece. You know, if we misstep, and it's it's truly not an if, it's a when. When we misstep, accidents um, happen, we, we come up short sometimes really important to honor impact over intent. You know, when we are apologizing to someone or we have, you know, made a transgression, um, really important that we are acknowledging the impact of our behavior or actions and not just our intention. Um, when something happens like that where, you know, somebody, um, their feelings are hurt or we've said something that we shouldn't have said, 
it's really, really important to know that going into a defensive mode is really just a human reaction to that. Uh, and it's important that we don't take up all of the time and all of the space in that conversation trying to defend our actions, that we truly just lean in uh, and honor the impact of those actions. Natasha, if I could add on, I do appreciate the fact that you talked about, you know, all the mistakes that are potentially going to be made as we work as individuals on DEI awareness. And I just want to reiterate a couple of things to the audience. First of all, when it comes to making mistakes, it is a very human thing to do. We're not going to be 100% perfect. Um, and the way out, Natasha outlined it was exactly perfect. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, obviously you want to keep, you want to think about the impact, of course, but don't let the fear of making mistakes prevent you from taking the steps forward in order to, in order to learn more about DEI. right? If you want to be able to work with another individual to learn more about them, or if you're trying to find those resources online to enhance your awareness, mistakes are going to be made and that's okay. Um, just keep in mind, again, don't let that fear prevent you from doing this work. This is such an important area. This is something that you're passionate about and you wanna learn more about. Use that as a driving factor for yourself so that you can continue your work forward on this and apply it to your professional and personal life as well. And another thing that I want to reiterate to everyone that's listening right now, um, you kind of alluded, it, alluded to it earlier, Natasha, is that you don't have to wait for someone else to tell you, hey, I want you to do this DEI training for our team this month or you know anything along those lines you as an individual have the power to take matters into your own hands so anytime that you have a topic area or a group that you want to learn more about of course there are plenty of other resources that you can find either within inside Sanford or even just out on Google you know you can go out to Google and find thousands of articles resources videos to help you enhance your awareness and understanding of DEI to better apply it to yourself yeah, I love that you you brought up that final point, Belma. Um, the fear element of this, you know, don't let fear stop you from learning and growing. Um, I think that that's a really tenant lesson in diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, um, we alluded to it already, but it's not about if you mess up, it's when, right? We all make mistakes, uh, but we can't let that fear stop us from getting involved. Um, you made a great point, you know, about even just getting uncomfortable. You know, sometimes prioritizing conver conversations that decenter certain populations and and really um, bolster up underrepresented populations, they can create feelings of discomfort. Uh, and and just knowing that that's totally a normal response to getting involved in diversity, equity, and inclusion, I think that goes a really long way. So finally, we'll talk about. The, how these actions have a positive impact on our mission. You know, how can harnessing the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion, or harnessing the strategies of inclusivity, how do they have a really positive impact on what we do every day as caregivers and care providers? Um, you know, what we know via surveys and some of the research that's been done is that it increases employee and team engagement. Uh, when teams feel comfortable bringing their whole self to work, um, there's just an increased um, retention, right, that, that comes along with that. So you see lower rates of turnover. People really feel valued uh, for their unique experience uh, and feel really comfortable bringing that to the table. Um, enhanced communication amongst coworkers. You know, Belma, I think that you've given some really great examples of that, but really harnessing diversity, equity, and inclusion can create a sense of comfortability amongst teams um, so that those work environments, you see more innovation, you see more teamwork, more collaboration. Um, and so really enhancing communication is an output as well. 
increased patient or resident satisfaction. You know, it's a really important element of this, knowing that our, our communities continue to diversify. Um, when that happens, it's not just our workforce that diversifies along with it. It's, it's our patient and resident population as well. Uh, when we can prioritize, you know, each one of these um, strategies and actions to increase our own worldview, it really enhances the ways in which we can show up for our patient and resident population um, and really specifically underrepresented populations as well. Um, and what it does, you know, ultimately is that it really drives home being the premier rural health care provider in our region. Uh, here at Sanford, that's truly what we are striving to do. We want to be world class in the care that we provide and, and who we are as an employer. Um, so having a conversation around diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, Belma mentioned it too, going out to the DE&I SharePoint site uh, to learn more about the resources that are being provided to our organization. Those are all excellent steps for each one of our listeners to take uh, to join us in this work. Yeah, these are all very great points, Natasha, and I'm glad that you brought them up. When it comes to really the overall mission here at Sanford Health and within our Good Samaritan Society footprint, I one of the things that I think of is word of mouth, right? So when we can cultivate these positive experiences for our employees, our residents, patients, or community members that we're working with on a daily basis, that is going to be shared inevitably, you know, with their family, friends, coworkers, et cetera. Um, and quite the opposite is true as well. If there's a negative experience that happens, that's likely to be shared with others too. So really being able to cultivate these positive experiences and focus on DEI efforts where we can encourage that sense of belonging as we talked about earlier in this presentation um, where everyone can feel valued as opposed to feeling like they're not being heard or you know in some cases I think there are individuals who don't want to feel like another metric in our system you know they don't want to feel like just another patient they don't want to feel like just another data set on an excel spreadsheet we want to be able to foster that relationship with them create the positive experience so that you know ultimately they're going to be able to talk about that experience with their inner circle and that's what's going to help propel our mission forward within our communities too and the people that we serve you make an excellent point belma you really do you know i i try and often say um, everybody takes with them a sanford story whether it's a team member whether it's a patient or a resident um, and harnessing DE and I, harnessing the principles of, you know, equitable and inclusive work environments can really help us maintain the type of employer reputation, the employer brand, um, and certainly, you know, who we are in our community. So excellent perspective for our listeners. Belma, I want to thank you uh, for your time today and coming alongside me in a conversation to introduce diversity, equity, and inclusion to our health system. Uh, I could not be more appreciative of your lived experience and, and really the work that you continue to do to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion here at Sanford. Yes, thank you so much once again. It was my pleasure.